Good afternoon and welcome to Salisbury Cathedral for this free lunchtime recital given by David Halls, Director of Music in this wonderful building. While you listen to the cathedral's recently restored and totally magnificent Father Willis organ, do be thinking of any questions that you'd like me to put to David on your behalf. And you can put them in the chat stream in YouTube. It would also be lovely to know where members of our audience are. Please also consider donating to the work of the RSCM as it helps organists and all those involved in church music advance down the road to recovery as guidance changes in, on music in worship. You can do this easily by visiting the RSCM website or by texting RSCM followed by an amount to 70480. Now in case of technical difficulties, the recital has been pre-recorded, but David will be joining us live when it finishes to answer your questions. So now up to the organ loft uh, to join David, who will be starting his recital with Richard Wagner's overture to Die Meistersinger.
the Wagner Overture you've just heard has been arranged for organ by many composers. Edwin Lemaire, of course, is the most famous, and his arrangement is, as far as I'm concerned, totally unplayable. So I didn't play that. I played an arrangement by Westbrook, which is also tricky, um, but I filled it out in places as well, so it's a sort of hybrid. So I hope you enjoyed that. The next item in the programme is a short piece by Herbert Sumption. It's his Allegretto. It's beautiful, beautiful piece, written originally for cello and piano, but transcribed by him for the organ. And so you hear the cello sounds of this organ um, in the left hand, playing the tune. It's the, uh, the Willis strings on the solo department, and they sound absolutely superb. So I hope you enjoy this. Thank you. Next is the Passacaglia and Fugue, written by myself. And this originated 
really is just the passacaglia. Now, passacaglia is basically a set of variations on a bass theme, usually in three time. And I'd always wanted to write a passacaglia. So I had in my mind it was going to be in B minor, which it is, and that it would be preceded by a short introduction. That's not in itself unusual. But what I wanted to do was to bring the main tune in the pedals sort of not absolutely as a solo, but with other things going on. So you'll hear after the short introduction, the, the, the pedal tune, which um, forms the basis of some 17 variations, I think, it comes in while there's still things going on in the hands. Anyway, the, that melody, which starts in the pedal, uh, moves around the texture, it goes sometimes into the treble, it sometimes changes key, it's sometimes the other way up, and it builds up and up until towards the end of the passacaglia you get the final statement of the tune with big crunching chords above it and a kind of reprise of the introduction. That sort of stood alone as a piece for a few weeks but it seemed to me to want a fugue. So I wrote the fugue, but when I started it, it occurred to me that I wanted to refer back to the passacaglia. So you will gradually hear little motifs, I think that you'll recognize that you heard much earlier in the work. And they all sort of bundled together. And actually the final page which is very loud, is in B major and is a kind of reprise of the end of the passacaglia, but of course in the major key.
John Gardner wrote his Five Dances for Organ, Opus 179, so he wrote a lot of music. Um, he wrote this for Catherine Ennis. Now, Catherine was a, an absolutely wonderful organist who sadly died last year. These pieces are really well written for the organ, and the jig is a... It sounds innocent, but actually it's rather more substantial. Many of you will know his setting, Tomorrow Shall Be My Dancing Day. That's a very good carol. Uh, and this is, in a, in a way, it's, it's a sort of quirky, rather similar piece, and I, I, I like playing it. Um, it, it. It's got some lovely corners, and you'll hear some very interesting sounds from the organ in this piece.
the Prelude and Toccata on Victor May Pascale by Denis Bedard came across my desk and I was really struck by the, 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 the concise writing in this piece. It's, it, it states the, the plain song at the beginning in a, in a nice sort of tutti and then it goes into a very tight fugue which doesn't last long but it's really nicely worked out and then the piece really takes off in the Toccata and you hear the plain song melody coming all over the place. It's in the pedals, it's in the hands and it, 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 it works up to a magnificent climax when you hear the, the melody stated at the very end. And it's one of these pieces which you, you wish was longer, I think, because it seems to be so much in it and it's so well written, I have to say, and I really enjoyed learning this. So I hope you enjoy listening to it.
William Walton wrote his coronation march, Crown Imperial, for the 1937 coronation. And it was arranged quite soon after by Herbert Murrell, and it works very well on the organ. There's a nice connection between Murrell and, and myself, and that is uh, that we both went to the same college in Oxford, but uh, some years apart, I have to say. So it's a, it's a good way to finish this recital, I think.
Welcome, David, and wow, thank you so much for such a wonderful recital. I hope our audience enjoyed it as much as I did. Um, you really bring out the, so many colours from the from the lovely Father Willis, especially in the, the John Gardner kit, uh, jig, which is a fascinating piece. And of course, the Wagner and Walton, full of orchestral colour. Um, before we get on to the question and answers, um, if you are able to donate to help us carry on with these uh, with these lectures and recitals, the details of how to do so are further down on the YouTube page if you hit show more. Also, a reminder that all of today's pieces, with the exception of David's unique adaption of Westbrook's arrangement of the Wagner, are available to purchase in our online shop at uh, rscmshop.com. So David, um, of course, one of the main reasons we couldn't broadcast live is that the cathedral is being used as a vaccination centre at the moment. And uh, you've been on uh, BBC News for your uh, playing organ music during the vaccination sessions and taking requests. Uh, tell us, what's the strangest request you've had from a vac vaccinee? That's a good question. Hello, everybody. Um... Yes, my colleague and I, um, John, John and I, have been playing many, many, many hours of organ music from anything from uh, Handel's Largo to Bach, um, Air in D and all that, that, that sort of stuff, uh, which is beautiful music, of course. But as far as um, strange requests, well, um, people uh, of a certain age group like certain things. So, so when, when the age group came down a bit, we were asked for things like the Star Wars theme, uh, which is remarkably difficult to play, I have to say. Um, and uh, Hedwig's theme from uh, Harry Potter, um, which is rather lovely, I think. Um, I was also asked to play a piece of Messier, which I thought was fairly adventurous. Um, uh, and I, I played something very soothing and something which wasn't going to uh, alarm people too much. Um, I also uh, was asked to play I've Got You Under My Skin, uh, which I thought was quite amusing. Um, and and, and so, somebody asked for the, 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 the theme from the Conte de Jean vaccine uh, by Foray. Very um, good. I, I played the whole thing, um, adapted it for organ, but that was quite fun. <laughs> yeah, yes, some nice ideas there. Um, now, uh, the newly restored organ does absolutely sound absolutely magnificent. And uh, there's actually a couple of uh, people have asked more or less the same sort of question. Um, what was the biggest difference you noticed when you got back into the cockpit? And uh, um, uh, what are your views on the organ since Harrison's completed the restoration? Right. Well, well, I mean, I think when, when you give it an instrument like, like this one, a thorough clean, um, when you play it, you are aware that it's speaking very quickly. Um, people may have noticed in the Walton, there's quite a lot of repeated notes in that, which we simply couldn't have, couldn't have done before. Um, so that, that, that was the first thing I noticed. Um, secondly, it's holding its tuning better. And thirdly, for, for those organ aficionados, um, there are some reeds on the grate, which when they took every single pipe of those stops up to uh, Durham, to look at them, they found in every single one a piece of felt. Now, um, they took the felt out, and of course, <laughs> these, these, these trumpets and, and reeds uh, spoke with a completely different voice, so we've kept the felt out. Uh, I suppose the interesting question is, why did they put the felt in in the first place? And nobody really knows, but I suspect in 1934, Sir Walter Alcock, one of my illustrious predecessors, um, decided, oh, that's too noisy, and we need to dull those a little bit. So, so I mean, the organ is, in some respects, louder, but it sounds, I think, so clean. Mm. And it, it all blends together very well, doesn't it? Mm. Uh, and, uh, I mean, some of the uh, more unusual reeds on the organ really come to the fore in the, in the John Gardner. Uh, uh, Tell us what, what reads you, you chose for that. Yes, well, there are on the solo, which is the, the top manual, um, there are the, the, the big guys, which are the solo tubers, and you heard one of those um, quite a lot uh, this, uh, this afternoon. Um, but there are a little collection of small ones. There's a clarinet and, and an orchestral oboe. 
and there's a bassoon as well, uh, which gives the, the octave below, obviously. Uh, and they are really good to use in, in, if you want to show off these rather more interesting colours. They're great for using in the Psalms, by the way, which my colleague um, John does regularly. And it always gives me a, a pleasant surprise when I hear them. <laughs> and the, uh, the, the wonderful string sounds you get in the, uh, that you used in the Sumption. Um, I mean, what, uh, what stop were you using for the, uh, for the left hander? Right, well, well, again, on the solo department, which up to um, 1934 was unenclosed, but is now enclosed, which means I can, can control the expression much more. Um, they, they, there's a selection of three. Well, two of them are strings, and people need to understand, obviously, they're not real strings, but they make a string sound. There's one called a cello celeste, and the other one called a violoncello. And I put those with a, a, a flute sound, which sort of rounds them off a little bit. And they are a, a really beautiful sound, amongst the best sounds on this instrument, I'd say. Mm. You say that, uh, that the, um, the solo section is enclosed. Um, is that why uh, somebody was asking why you have two pedals uh, on your organ? And I presume yeah. one isn't clutched and... Uh, <laughs> the other break. Well, uh, 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 absolutely right. The, if you remember, everybody on on the the right hand side near my right foot um, it, it is the swell box, which a lot of organs have that. And on the left hand side is the solo box. And all the stops in the solo box are are controlled on that pedal, except for the tubers, which are unenclosed, as you probably <laughs> recognised. <laughs> And uh, I think in a couple of the pieces, we heard a bit of 32-foot uh, read action. Um, yes. Uh, the, <laughs> yeah, we've got, uh, there are two 30, 32s on this organ, and they're actually placed um, round the corner, in fact. Uh, they're in the north transept. And, and, and if anybody knows a cathedral, you see the, um, the, the metal pipes of the 32, which are the biggest pipes on the organ, and they give the deepest notes, obviously. Uh, but behind those are another set, which is the 32 foot reed, which makes a, a very good noise, particularly on a bottom B flat. Why particularly the B flat? I don't know. It, it's, <laughs> it, but it's really useful in a marvellous piece by Herbert Howells called uh, the Mag and Nunk Coal Reg, oh, yeah, which yeah. of course in the Gloria ends in B flat. So you oh, hear this sound. Absolutely wonderful. Is... I'm sure that's why he did it. <laughs> Yes, and uh, oh, just wondering whether he wrote it while he was assistant organist at Salisbury, but... No, he didn't. He, 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 he wrote it after that, I think. Um, he, he was here um, back at the, right at the beginning of the 20th century, wasn't he, when he was a young man, and for a very short time. Hmm, okay. Um, I'm just seeing, have we got any more questions? Any, any more, Sam? Have we got any more that people want to know? What's my favourite stop? Well, hmm. it, uh, that's that's a really good question, and unfortunately, I was using a lot of stops in combination, as you as you realise, because there are a lot of noise in that recital. But my absolute favourite stop is on the choir manual. It's the first keyboard, and it's called the open diapason, and it speaks with an absolute true straight sound. It's just perfect. It's not a big sound though, so you don't use it for any of the, the really loud stuff, but that, that's my favorite. The other one I really love is the clarinet on the solo, which is very, very beautiful. <laughs> hmm. uh, presumably the, uh, the open type on the, on the choir would be, would be to accompany the choir. Yes, uh, that's right, um, yeah. And, and the pipes are actually at a low level near the, the, the singers. That's right. the name, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, right. Well, as I say, thank you so much, David, very much. Uh, total for... pleasure. And, <laughs> and um, I should have said that when it came to my piece, that's a good time for people to go and have a coffee. So if anybody did <laughs> no, that, no, no. well done. <laughs> uh, no, it was, a, it was a really interesting piece to, to listen to. So thank, thank you, David, for your, uh, for your immense generosity in playing this recital in aid of the Royal School of Church Music. We really do appreciate it. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, now, I see that a number of members of the Self-Isolation Choir uh, are in the audience today, so a big shout out to them. And uh, they'll be joining us in our Music Sunday celebrations, uh, the next date for your diary. Uh, RSCM Music Sunday is on Sunday the 26th, uh, sorry, uh, Sunday the 6th of June, 
Uh, gosh, I've nearly got that wrong. So do please join us for the Big Music Sunday Evensong at 6 p.m. on the 6th of June, which this year comes from Litchfield Cathedral. Um, so please join us for them. And uh, there's uh, lots of great music to join in with, uh, which you can buy from the um, RSCM's music shop at rscmshop.com. So thank you very much for joining us and hope we can see you again at, uh, on Music Sunday on the 6th of June. Thank you and goodbye.